Hello there. Thank you so very much for joining me today. I'm going to be continuing my series of softly spoken, very dark storytelling. The book is available on Steam. It is called Oak Rot by Louis Morel or Louis Morel. Either way, they're pretty smashing. They've written a great book. The illustrations are just they're pretty cool. This is the second, but also this is one of those books that you do not need to have read or listened to everything in order. It's um it's like a, a scene setting, world building kind of series. So I would suggest you listen to the prologue if you have not already. But if you haven't and you just want to sit back and relax and listen to some descriptive darkness, then you're welcome to do that would just say this is not suitable for children. There are the odd swear words here and there. If you're okay with that, come on in and we will talk about the Lady of the Flies. Lady of the Flies. You thought a single fly buzzing away in the background could be annoying. How about a few million accompanied by a very disgruntled queen. The reason all your farm animals have been mysteriously replaced by piles of white bone and all your crops seem to wither and die. They are known by many names, the goddess of pestilence, the swarm that hungers, the lady of many children, or most commonly, oh shit, it's her. One of the biggest problems when discussing the abominations that are found in our beautiful forest is where truth and fiction begin and end, when reality becomes more messed up than the most heated fever dream, it can be impossible to tell which is folklore or fact. Especially in this case, when our little lady seems to love adding to her folklore menagerie posing as a god of death, an avenging angel, the dead come back to life. It seems to be a little game with her, the stupider the belief that you hammer into these mortals' heads, the more cool points you win. Spin around three times, close your eyes and stay perfectly still, and the lady of flies will immediately vanish. Seriously or place all your valuable belongings in a very big pile and make sure they are entirely unsupervised and because the gods can see you are so trustingly naive, they will stop the Lady of Flies from stealing them, unless you go and check on them, in which case you've broken your secret pact with the gods and the Lady of Flies all have stolen all your belongings because you are so suspicious and untrustworthy. As long as you never check to see if they have been stolen, they will never be stolen. One of the more popular beliefs is that the Lady of the Flies is a martyr who sacrificed herself to trap all the world's rotten pestilence within her that way saving everybody else from terrible plagues and illnesses. So you should give tribute and be humble and respectful because she has sacrificed herself to save you. And after all this time, I still haven't described what the Lady of Flies looks like. I just thought it would be wise to inform you of how dubious the information about her can be. Take all this with a grain of salt. The Lady of the Flies appears to be a young woman with dark hair and pale skin, wearing a rather bizarre, blackish-grey, oddly disturbing ball gown. Apart from the offence to all fashion, which is her ball gown, she would seem pretty harmless, if she weren't always accompanied by a horde of minute, hungry, black insects 
that slowly eats anything and everything in its path, such that even locusts would think it a bit much, with Our Lady in the centre of it all. And I think I will leave you with Lily's notes, if there is any source I trust when it comes to information about this messed up world, it's Lily, and she seems to know more than anyone else. Lily's Notes Subject appears to be a female, age ranging from seven to mid-twenties in appearance, though after the age of twenty-five the appearance does not noticeably age. Age of individual specimens hard to determine. Specimens have claimed to be in the age range of eighteen to the low thousands, though due to the specimen's attitude and sense of humour, all claims by them are very suspect, i.e. they enjoy messing with people. Appearance consists of black hair, very pale skin, and a tattered ball gown-esque dress made out of a fabric of black and greys. Closer inspection of the dress reveals it is actually part of the subject's body, and the dress itself is made of a combination of leather formed from the subject's skin and keratin. Attempting to get an autopsy on one of the ladies, but all previous attempts have been practically suicidal. The subject is always accompanied by a massive horde of very small black flies. I cringe at using the term flies, since I highly doubt that they are, but I have not been able to verify this. She acts as a hub for the flies, and theoretically as a hive. But, unlike most hives, this one is mobile, can defend itself, and is considerably more intelligent. The flies will bite and suck the bloods or fluids from any organic life form in line of sight. Due to their relative size, it can take a long time for a victim to die, or even to notice that they are being consumed. Usually, plants will begin to brown and wither, and animal life emaciates before death ensues. It can take months or minutes, and if the lady of flies moves on, her swarm will follow. Therefore, most victims who are beginning to be consumed by the flies will likely survive with a short recovery time. Apparently, the flies do not possess any form of stomach acid with which to break down their food, as they seem entirely reliant on the lady's digestive system to do this. It is unclear how the flies consume the digested nutrients, whether they gain access to the lady's digestive system in some way, be this via glands similar to mammary glands in mammals, or directly from the lady's bloodstream, or whether they fly down the lady's throat and drink directly from her stomach, it's unknown. The ladies of the flies will tend to seek out farmland for the high concentration of edible plants and animals. In cases where the ladies mainly inhabit the forest, they would likely be malnourished due to not being able to consume black oak and subsisting mostly off fungi and small plants that eke out an existence on meagre sunlight beneath the nearly impenetrable tree canopy. With the scarcity of farmable land, and land not infested by black oak, conflict over territory between the ladies of flies and humans, as well as other ladies of the flies, is very common. Also, due to the large amounts of land needed to support a single lady, they tend to be very, very territorial, and the majority of the lady of the flies' fatalities are due to their fighting with each other over territory. Their general demeanour when interacting with human beings seems to be mostly bored, detached, sad, and annoyed, due to their being unable to interact with other sentient life for long periods of time without them being consumed by a swarm of flies, they appear to be very lonely, 
with deep-seated attachment issues and sometimes with near-psychopathic traits. More advanced testing and research has shown that these personality traits are likely caused by purely environmental factors brought on by the lady's isolation and rather unique life experiences. Most of the ladies of the flies have parasitical relations with humans, pretending to be a god of death or of the harvest that, if not given tribute of sufficient food, will make your crops fail, your animals die, and your children sick. I'm very much certain that they are not gods, but due to their abilities, they can certainly follow up on their threats. A single lady of the flies can be attached to a small village for generations and tends to be seen as a mythological creature of worship. If the lady is particularly smart, she may be regarded as some sort of benevolent spirit whose guidance is needed on matters trivial or massive. Overall, they are not a threat to the civilian population. Only an immense number of them could cause an apocalyptic scenario, and, due to their intense infighting over territory, a large group of them is likely to tear each other apart before becoming a major threat to human life. 